the Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. Today, this is the song of my heart. Singing, the Lord has done great things for us. And so we are filled with joy. What great things indeed has the Lord done for us? And even to ask, what is the single greatest thing that the Lord has done for me? And do I rejoice? We have a context set here in the prophet Jeremiah, the time of the Old Covenant, the Old Testament. And we hear about this great hope, this great promise that the Lord is going to do this great thing for his people, his own, who he sees as his own child. We hear his own firstborn, the people of God. But the people of God, they find themselves in this exile. They find themselves no longer in harmony with God. Separated. And this is their greatest grief. That there's been this chasm, this Distance, this rupture between them and their father. But we hear the promise. Our Lord says, Behold, I will bring you back. I will gather you from the ends of the world. I will lead you to these brooks of water. For I am a father to you. The line that I hear in my heart is that he has sent us a priest like no other. He sent us a priest like no other. Think from my vantage and context, some of these readings, a question I've been asked is, Father, growing up, did you always know that you would be a priest? Or, Father, how old were you when you first considered the priesthood? And for me, it remains so stunning, so remarkable, that I'm actually here today as an ordained priest, a minister. It's so beyond the picture I would have ever thought. And we hear, no one takes this honor upon himself, but only when called by God, speaking of priesthood. For me, growing up, priesthood was never even part of the radar. Not until I was 22 years old in Duluth in my fourth year of college. And this call came. What a gift, living life as a priest. But what is the call of the priest? Why do we have priests? Like, why does God actually call members of his people to become priests? We heard, this is the the second reading, brothers and sisters, every high priest is taken from among men. 
made their representative before God. For what? To offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. For sins. Why do we have a priesthood? Why do we need priests? Because I and all of us are in a state of sin. We can't understand priesthood until we really understand the gravity of sin, what sin does, what it means. So that's rather specific. You know, what is the call of the priest? To offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. So for the priest, what's most basic? What's it all about? It's going before God, presenting himself to God for himself, but for the sake of the community of sinners. And for me, um, to realize, where do we most fully see this? In the Holy Mass. The Holy Mass. We speak in this way. I see myself, the sanctuary is like the base of a mountain. We all come to the base of this mountain of God. And one of us, the priest, is asked to go and to ascend the mountain to the altar on behalf of us who are sinners. And so we speak that way. The priest offers the Holy Mass. We bring forward the gifts to the altar. We hear the Mass as the holy sacrifice Now, to be clear, and it's so good how this letter brings this up. How many priests are there? There's hundreds of thousands of ministers who serve as priests. And what we all have in common, what I have in common with every priest is that I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. I'm beset by weakness. That's what we hear. He himself, the priest, they're beset by weakness. And so for this reason, they must make sin offerings for himself as well as for the people. Think of it this way. I'm sinner number one. <laughs> sinner number one. And I need to be going to the altar for myself. And all of us. Yet that line. He has sent us a priest like none other. How many priests are there? Yet, you know, there's the ministers. So we can count a couple hundred thousand. But really there's only one. There's only one great high priest, and that is Jesus Christ. He is our priest. And we hear, you know, priests are taken from among men. What makes him like none other is that he wasn't taken from among men. He himself became a man for us and our sake. And taken or sent as a man for what? To offer sacrifice for sin. Jesus is like a priest like none other because not only does he offer a gift, a sacrifice to our Father, he offers him very, his very self, his very self. 
The one who is in harmony with God comes to us who are not in harmony with God, but to represent us, and he gives his very life on the cross. And that's the gift of every holy mass, that together we are joined with our high priest, Jesus, who is offered and offers himself to the Father for our sins, And for that, we can be filled with joy, knowing that the Lord has done great things for us, and he has sent us the great, perfect high priest, Jesus, who gives his life for us. And so we are filled with joy.